When was the last time you've seen a kid play with a box? Today, you would usually see a kid this age on a phone, iPad, TV, or some other screen. Usually with not much interaction with their environment or with people. This video will show how the boxes were integrated in an educational space, introducing a new element in the classroom that will challenge the kids to create their own environment. Basically, to think with the box, outside the box. We begin our story at Nomads, an alternative business school based in Amsterdam. Nomads um, is an international business school uh, that focuses on uh, social innovation and change. So we educate change makers and what everyone wants to make a contribution to make our world even better. So we try to constantly think in and and. Um, so it's and good for me, and good for the people around me, and better for the world, ideally. Yeah, so Nomads works with real projects, with real companies. That means there's real implications from what we do. It, it's an, a sense of responsibility, and at the same time you learn by doing. It's not so much theory like you would see in normal schools. It's a real company comes with a real project, then you work with it, then you fail or you succeed, and that, that thing is there, it's in the world. Along comes a small Austrian company that makes cardboard elements for workspaces, shows, and educational platforms. They asked us nomads if we would research their new product, a smaller, tougher model, aimed at schools and kids. This company is called Paper Town. Step one, get a team together. The Paper Town pitch got the attention of four nomads entrepreneurs who would over the next few months research and document the usage of the boxes. Step two, get the boxes. We received 20 boxes in four different designs, but don't be fooled. These are not ordinary cardboard boxes. A double layered seven millimeter thick cardboard with a high percentage of recycled fiber, which is usually used for heavy duty packaging. It is sturdy and very mobile at the same time. Step three, testing at Nomads. Once we assembled the boxes at Nomads, we left them for the students to use as they see fit. So the first day when, when Philip arrived and uh, when he brought all these boxes to, to Nomads, our students, uh, the other students of Nomads, they came in, they didn't know what it is. And then they start playing around with them, doing their first experience and the first contact with those boxes. The first impression I had was I liked it that they were so light and that you could put them on top of each other and to really make it like a, you can make a wall out of it or a chair or a little table. So you saw it in the edge of the room and, um, and students were using it, they, they were using it for for, to sit on it, they were using it to sm uh, play small games, to put the projector on it, to use it as a, as a little table. So, and actually, um, now the boxes are included into the space and we're actually used to it, the students are used to it, so we had a lot of fun with it and very, in various ways how, how to use it. Step 4. Play day. After using the boxes ourselves, it was time to see how they could deal with the more harsh environment. Hi, we're bringing some new boxes. Children came in, and when they first saw the boxes, they start destroying it. <laughs> they said stuff like, "I want to break it. This is stupid. And uh, what are we going to do?" And we played around three hours with them in the paper boxes. This is the result. So they just went and tried as hard as they can to destroy the product, which. In my opinion, I saw it like very resilient. I was very impressed. I, I was sure they're gonna destroy it and burn it and conquer the world. They had so much energy. After 
10 minutes the energy was out and we started to, to guide them a little bit. So the teacher stepped in, she, did, uh, she made a whole game of it and the children picked it up immediately and also the teacher saw the possibilities. Then we gave assignments like uh, build a bench, uh, build, a, build stairs, build a house and after that you saw them, oh can I build an airplane, can I build a ship, can I build a... And uh, we said yeah. So they, they just started to do it. We played a game with them that the ground, the floor is water and they are crocodiles and they have to build a bridge. That was very um, graspable for the children and they started um, organizing themselves, they start building a bridge, um, they came up with ideas how to do the bridge and um, that was very creative and they were actually concentrated for um, about 10-15 minutes. It's so strong on one hand and on the other hand it's, it's soft enough that it doesn't weigh so much. If it falls on a kid then it doesn't hurt the kid. And that was something that I was like, oh my god they built a huge mountain, it's gonna kill somebody. Ah! <laughs> and it doesn't kill anybody. Some children even fall down on one of the boxes or um, boxes fall down on them and none of the children got hurt. So this was also a plus point. Some of the children started crying shortly because it was a shock moment, but um, there was no real um, damage. They started to build um, high spaces to jump off, and I, I found it a little bit scary because they wanted to build the, the highest point, and it was like a little bit of a wobbly wobbly. So that was good that we that we not let them do that. So it's good to, to be there. The feedback of the children. The children really like the product and they want to keep it. And they were actually very sad that we said, um, hey, we need, we need to leave and we need to take the boxes with us. Can we have it? And uh, what is this actually? From who is this? And uh, I told them, yeah, this is, uh, yeah, well, this is a producer and you are the first kids in the world who can play with that. And they were really proud of themselves. And I think next week we're gonna bring it again. Because the kids were so happy, we let them keep the boxes for a few weeks. Yeah! Play day was over. A little way down the road, we invited an MD and a kindergarten teacher to join our reflection on the product and to share their insights. Last but not least, step five, conclusions. The good, the bad, and the rest. What we usually use in school is one hand to, to write, to read. some are lefties, some are righties. And what is actually needed and often forgotten is the cross function of the two brain sides, the left and the right side. And as soon as you have movements where you involve both sides, the brain gets more connected and the information flows much faster and more effective. I wouldn't be surprised if we really can see some uh, brain changes of children, not just educated by this, but by the range of products which in increase uh, children's flexibility and connection. When we were uh, little we played outside. So we didn't, we didn't have the computer or something else. We made stuff. The children need that because the stuff for children is already been made for them. Like uh, it's already a car, it's already... So this, is, this was very nice. At first it was everything. It was like a ship and then it was a plane and then it was a, a house to see if they fit, if everybody fits in the house. So with the time they knew how to use it. It was quite complicated to, to build them up. Um, it took like, you can see it here, it looks quite complicated from the inside and it took like five minutes per box to build it up. After a while you get more experienced of course and we were thinking it would be very helpful to, to put small numbers or small pictures on inside of the box so that it's easier to know, <clears throat> hey this is the next step. This is a nice metaphor for educating kids, it brings a frame and a lot of freedom to play with and to create worlds and that's exactly what kids need. They need uh, to have a frame to feel safe and uh, not to get lost and on the other hand the freedom to move and give them much more flexibility to build and make them 
More nice, creative, co-working people. We come to a, a time that, that they have everything, so they miss things like this. My son, every time, comes to me and asks me, Mom, what must I do now? And I think, yeah, go play. No, but with what? He, he doesn't know how it, the fantasy is gone. He doesn't know how to, uh, to play uh, on himself. Uh, he, he wants the iPad or the Nintendo. From my perspective, you give them a tool to create the, the environment. They have to fight with each other, uh, like, okay, uh, what can we do with this? Then a leader stands up and says, now we can, make, we can build this. So that leader, only this high, has to create uh, a vision. And people uh, follow or follow not, you have the first follower. And it's really interesting to see that. And um, So I don't, I don't steer that process. I just give those boxes, see what's going on and give hints. And that's it. Yeah, smile with the buds. In the camera? A few months down the road, we found that these boxes open a portal to a world of imagination, leadership, collaboration, creativity, and problem solving. It is a chance for them to experience what we've experienced before the technological veil. To feel what you felt once your couch became a mighty fort, or your backyard became a dangerous jungle. With this cardboard element, they can transform their environment to whatever they choose. What's the first thing that you would build out of these boxes? I would build a little house. A Super Mario World. And then I would go against the bombs and go bling bling. <laughs> the first thing I would build is of course a castle. I can use it to make a fire. <laughs> uh, make a kitchen and cook. Start with a spaceship. And then a dragon. To make a little wall. The police car. I'd like the house. A drum set. Oh, and a fort. Definitely a fort.